Now, in this video of WCF, we will discuss about the data contract. So far in the WCF video series, we have discussed about the contracts out of which we have seen the implementation of service contract and operation contract. So basically, let's discuss about the data contract here as this contract is used to file an agreement between the service and the client which will tell like what all possible data types can be used for the communication. All the predefined data types such as integer and strings are automatically implemented with the data contract. But if you are using any user defined data type such as class, interface or enums, you have to decorate them with the data contract attribute. Basically the purpose of doing all these things is to serialize the data types in the XML document which will be there on the application when you will pass the reference. So you can also use the C sharp serializable attribute in that but it will not allow you for any customization. For example, if you have created any employee class with the serializable attribute and you use it in this communication, so the, all the properties of that particular class will be uh, written in the XML document. But if you want to skip few of the properties out there, you cannot do that in the serializable attribute. So what you can do, you will have to go for the data contract attribute. For example, if you are creating any class having some properties out there, so data contract will be used for the class, means this attribute will be set for a class and for all the properties which you want to serialize inside that will be marked as data member. So only those properties will be serialized which have been decorated with the data member. Once you are done, the serializable, serialize and deserialize will be done for uh, from the WCF for all those members who have marked as the data member. So let's see a practical implementation where I'm going to create a class with the data contract and the properties with the data members and then we'll see how this serialization is taking place. So let's create any other WCF service to implement the data contract out there. So first of all, I'll create a class here with the attribute called data contract all right and i will get this data contract class attribute in the system.runtime.serialization so first of all i'll have to include that here right after that i'll be able to create a class so let's take a class called uh, user login and then here inside i'll create a couple of properties couple of variables like a string UID and string PWD all right and accordingly now you can create the public properties for that so here what I'll do I'll take create a public property public string user ID so like here I have created a couple of public properties for these two data members now whatever I want to expose to the client while it is using the service I can do one thing I'll just come here and will say data member so only the at only the properties or data members which are decorated with the attribute data member will only be exposed to the service if you want you can also expose the private members like in the same way like data member all right if in case it is required because by default when you will use any particular class you will not be able to expose the private member of that particular class so this is the benefit of data contract and data member that you can customize the content which you want to expose to the client while it is consuming the service so what I'll do here I'll keep it simple I'll just say data member for both the public properties Apart from that, if you want to pass any other information, like if you want to make it required, you can say is required boolean true means it will be a mandatory property for it. If you want to give any alternate name or if you want to pass any order in which it will be serialized on the use uh, client side, so you can set the order. For example, if you want to make order numbers uh, means the sequence number 0, 1, 2 in such a way, you can just pass that. Alright, so these are the options available. 
So using this class user login, I'll create another method in the interface using the operation contract. Operation contract and here what I'll do, I'll just say user login and I'll do add. Alright, so I will simply add one user. So add user is the method. Alright, and rather than passing it here, uh, I'll not pass it as a return type. Rather, I'll return a void and I will pass a user type out here. Alright. So now here what you can do, you can simply just pass the parameter out here that is user login and whatever you want to pass, you will have to define it here. Alright, so what I'll do, I'll just again interface implement this interface. And here inside this, you can just write any random code for adding the particular user, whether in the database or in a particular collection, whichever you are working with. Alright, and let's do one more thing like here, I'll have to make this class public. Alright, because this particular class is public where I'm consuming it. So this should also be public. So now there are the three methods all right so let's build it again and you can use it as you were using it earlier and here in the client application where i'm consuming this particular service i'll just right click over the service and will say update web service references so it will up update it means one new method which i have added will come right here all right so let's come to user.wsdl so after refreshing the references here, you can find the third function also which I have added in the service that is the add user and you can see that right here. All right. And you can do one more thing like here you can see there is a schema and schema locations available. So in order to see the you know, means whatever is written on the client side, we can just copy this schema location it will come to the browser and will put this particular path out there and here you can see there is a name called password and ID for both the things all right it's in the label true and true so let's do some changes out there and see how they are reflected here so let's say for the user ID I'll make it is required is equal to true all right so I'm making it compulsory here and similarly for order I'll make it one. All right. Similarly, I can do the same things for the second property out here in the data member. All right. And let's make this order two. Okay. So let's build this thing. Build is complete. Let's refresh the references here. And now let's refresh this particular page. All right. So now you can see user ID is coming at the first and then the password. All right. Similarly, if I want to expose any private member, I can do that also. So for that, I will do it, make it a data member. Let's save. Let's build. Let's refresh the reference. Let's refresh now this browser. So you see this time this PWD, the private property is also here in this particular schema definitions so this is how you can deal with the things with the user defined data types by working with the data service and data member attribute in wcf